Imagine a camera where a handheld two-second shot with a hundred millimeter lens is possible. Now most cameras have one, maybe two features that you're really excited to try. The Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II has four. In-body stabilization allows handheld shots up to two seconds. The guy who loves blurred motion over street scenes or waterfalls in the Black Forest on the Viking Rhine getaway cruise feels like he's reached nirvana, which oddly is not a Viking word meaning best thing ever. There are five stabilization settings in stills mode. SIS-1 is the full five-axis mode. Number two, Pro Capture mode. From the Drive HDR menu, select Pro Capture High, which saves up to 14 images before the shutter is pressed. Use the C1 settings page to adjust the frame rate from 15 to 60 frames per second, set the pre-shutter capture up to 14 frames. At 20 frames, I still miss the cyclists, but at 60, that's the shot. There are some limitations. Olympus lenses only, and the buffering only lasts about a minute. Press play and review your images. Also live composite, so imaginative. Press the shutter and watch the picture build up. Four, although this camera has a 20 megapixel sensor, it can generate 50 megapixel images by combining eight exposures. This works best with a tripod. Activate it from camera menu two by selecting a shutter release time. This enables you to press the shutter before the image is taken, reducing potential blur. Then press the drive HDR button and press right. Then press the shutter. This raw file is 66 megs compared to 20 megs for a standard image. But compare the detail, the high res shot and the same shot at the standard setting. Because of the time it takes to capture the eight images, the effects can be interesting for non-static subjects. When a manufacturer releases a Mark II model, you can bet the Mark I was pretty popular. In addition to the above, a quick trip down the Mark II spec sheet reveals some impressive numbers, which would have you rank this model ahead of DSLR and mirrorless cameras in this price class. Also, a bunch of new proprietary tech terms. This is a mirrorless camera, which I consider an advantage. It's smaller and lighter, and because of the smaller Micro Four Thirds sensor, lenses are also smaller. That's a big weight advantage for a holiday. The review unit arrived with the new 12 to 100 f4 IS Pro lens. Combined weight, slightly over a kilo. Those impressive specs include an 18 frame per second burst mode with auto exposure and focus, 60 frames with manual exposure and focus, and 121 phase detect focus points. Those handheld long exposures come thanks to the five axis in body stabilization, which Olympus claims adds over six exposure stops of range. Video mode supports the full cinema 4K 4096 resolution and claims a data rate over 200 megabits. That stabilization works nicely for video too. The more I shot, the more I was impressed. External monitors and recorders are supported. I'll get to the video details later, but feel free to skip ahead using the menu markers in the description below. Olympus also loaned me the 12 mm Prime. The metal body is splash proof, dust proof, and freeze proof to minus 10 degrees Celsius. You'll have to trust Olympus on that. I didn't test those but it does feel rugged and solid, so I didn't worry when it started to rain while we cruised by the castles of the Middle Rhine. The grip is deep, the camera is comfortable to hold and balanced, even with the 12 to 100. The forward tilted front control dial is ergonomically positioned. The fully articulated and rotating screen, it's suitable and usable for everything, low to the ground, portrait mode, selfies, vlogging, this is the best. But of course, Olympus isn't the only manufacturer to do this. However, as the ports are on the same side as the swivel, there can be conflict and a lack of rotation when cables are connected. Controls in various shapes and configurations abound, and there are pro details like dual SD card slots. 12 of the buttons are customizable. I do prefer to have the power switch on the right side. Here it's on the left. 
Otherwise, the right-hand controls are all nicely positioned for intuitive access. But the power switch can be customized. The fun lever can be turned into a power switch, and that's just one of the myriad possible customizations. It takes some trial and error while you discover and try the possibilities. Now, I can't begin to describe how overwhelmingly powerful this is. Hopefully, you'll settle on a combination that works for you, but that may take a few weeks. My review unit arrived without the included flash. There is a flash hot shoe and a flash sync port. The M1 Mark II has a 20 megapixel micro four thirds sensor. Well, that's enough for the highlights. Let's go through the exposure details. Standard PASM modes on the dial. Program shift is available, turn the back dial. Front dial for exposure compensations. Five stops up and down. In aperture and shutter priority, a rear dial controls aperture or shutter and the front exposure compensation. In manual, Front is shutter, rear is aperture, both controls are nicely positioned. To set the ISO, flip the AEL-AFL, the fun switch, to 2, then turn the back dial. Or press OK for the control panel overlay and turn the front dial. Auto, low, 200 to 25.6, the meter, bottom right, displays while you adjust the setting, a handy feature. So often the meter disappears when ISO settings are changed. Auto ISO is managed on custom settings panel E1, where default and upper limit can be set, but only to 6400. There's also an option to disable auto ISO in manual, but it's unintuitively named. Shutter runs from bulb to 1 over 8000. Maximum bulb is 30 minutes. To select meter modes, press the back of the top left button, standard matrix, center weighted, and spot modes, as well as a highlight and shadow spot mode. Highlight makes sure bright objects, like snow I suppose, stay white. Shadow makes dark objects black. Metering can be tied to the autofocus target area. And in addition to the meter display at the bottom, press info to display the histogram, which has a very wide horizontal axis providing lots of data. Other display modes include the very useful horizontal and vertical levels, which has spoiled me for all others. Back to the histogram. Use custom D3 to set the histogram's upper and lower limits. Areas above the upper limit are red, below the lower limit in blue, with the spot metering range in green. Making good use of that takes some familiarization. Incidentally, by default, live view setting is off, D2 live view boost, and set manual shooting to off to see the actual exposure on screen. Incidentally, there is also a control in the D3 manual focus setting. Although it is a little grainy, this is one of the most useful screen displays I've seen. There's the standard eye detection switching between viewfinder and LCD. The button beside the viewfinder can force the switch or hold down the button to adjust the options. Diopter adjustments are easy with the dial on the side, which accommodates my prescription. Use the screen left button to select touch modes, touch to focus, and focus and snap. The slider screen right controls the size of the touch area. The control screen, but not the menu, are touch enabled. I found the physical control set so useful and intuitive that actually I rarely use the touch features. Use customization page A2 to enable the LCD to work as a touchpad with viewfinder shooting. The first thing you need to know about focus is that many Olympus lenses have a focus clutch on the focus ring. You can snap it in and out, and when it's engaged, only manual focus is available and a fixed travel focus distance ring is displayed. Nice feature. The manual focus assist must first be activated from the setup menu A3. Peaking is turned on here, but color and intensity are set with D3. The view returns to normal, and the peaking disappears shortly after you finish making adjustments. The autofocus mode selector appears with the meter mode. Single, continuous, manual again. Combined and tracking, select an object and soft press the shutter to track. Among the variety of bracketing options, none of which are available when an external monitor is connected, you can choose from exposure, white balance, flash, and ISO. Multiple art filters can be selected for bracketing. I don't think there's any limit to the number you can choose. Press the shutter and it saves them in order. 
This is a great way to tour through all of the art filter and color options. The M1 Mark II also supports focus bracketing and focus stacking, which I wanted to try, but neither of these lenses are compatible with that feature. Picture or color control modes selected from the control panel include eye enhance, tagged as impressive looking results, vivid, natural, muted, portrait for skin tones, mono, and custom. Use shooting menu one to select your preferred settings. And note that you can also reset them all from this menu. A selection of art filters are also available here. The color creator sets 30 hues at eight saturation levels. Let me know if you find a good use for these. Custom setting D1 enable you to select which appear on the menu. Flip the AL AFL to two and use the rear dial to access a standard set of white balance options. It's not available in all modes, so use the control panel instead. Choose a custom setting and press info to capture the current white balance nice and easy. Four custom settings are available or set degrees Kelvin. Press info and turn the rear dial. Custom white balance can't be captured in movie mode, a typical but aggravating limitation. The control panel includes controls for sharpness, contrast, and saturation with five control points available for each, as well as gradation, four selectable response curves, auto, normal, high, and low, and a highlight shadow control panel where both shadow and highlight curves can be adjusted with 15 settings to create more or less contrasty images. There may not be many of us who are interested in adjusting all of these settings, but Olympus engineers have enabled us to access a range of settings that are usually kept for the engineering team. And it's worth noting that for all of these, shooting RAW plus JPEG means you'll get the affected JPEG as well as the unadulterated RAW. Don't you wish everybody did that? The Mark II has four stabilization modes, auto, all directions, vertical only, this is useful when panning horizontally, and horizontal for tilting. Lens stabilization can be prioritized. Burst modes are set using the custom settings C1 page. High can be set up to 15 frames. The drive mode is selected by pressing the top of the left hand button. The drive menu appears at the bottom of the screen. When I tried with the UHS-2 card and recording only to slot 1, shooting either raw or large fine JPEGs with manual exposure and focus, the M1 Mark II rattles off 15 frames per second for nearly 4 seconds, then continues at about 3 per second. There is a second mode, sequential high silent. The heart denotes that the electronic shutter is used. On C1, its frame rate goes up to 60 frames. I tried that with JPEG and with RAW. Both impressively saved 48 images for three quarters of a second. So yes, if it kept that up, 60 per second. It continues at three to four per second after that. For all of these, the buffer clears in less than 15 seconds. With sequential low, autofocus and exposure remain active. There's a pronounced flicker, and it records about 10 per second for 6 seconds. Clearly, these results would be more impressive with a larger buffer. The aspect ratio menu provides the standard set of options, and indicates the exact pixel counts for each a nice touch, making it simple to make your choice, up to a maximum of 20 megapixels. There are four JPEG qualities with and without RAW, and this is probably the right time to investigate the dual card save options. To manage the card slots, go to the control panel. Select standard and set it up to record stills to one card, movies to the other. Select auto switch to record everything on one card until it fills up and then switch. Dual independent down type, go back to the menu and the two cards are displayed to assign any combination to one and the other this setting is also accessible on the control panel, but if one card fills up, you can't save to the other. Dual independent up type, which enables you to continue when one fills up, and dual same with the same up down setting rules. This certainly does provide a lot of options, but there must be a better way to present this, and I'm not at all clear which might be the best, but I'm pretty sure that since only slot one supports UHS-2, 
That's where I want to record video and burst. That is the mouse console. The stabilization is really noticeable for video as well, although it clearly needs to be turned off when you're using a tripod. This is smooth. It's as if you're shooting with a gimbal. It's just amazing to watch as I move the camera and it smoothly glides along. You want this. Two modes for video. One is sensor shift and electronic stabilization. That uses a slight crop. Two is sensor shift only. The EM-1 Mark II can record at resolutions from Cinema 4K 17 by 9 aspect ratio 4096 by 2160 and UHD 4K 16 by 9 3840 by 2160 as well as HD. Frame weights from 24 to 60, Cinema 4K only 24 frames, UHD up to 30 frames. Recordings are limited to 29 minutes in all modes. Recordings are saved as .mov files and saved in 2 minute 15 second chunks at various sizes, all well under 1 gigabyte. I'm perplexed and disappointed by the data rates. For full HD, they run about as advertised, normal 18 megabits, fine 30, super fine 52. After that, I started running into alternate facts. The 4K setting, given as 102, actually runs about 60. Cinema 4K, listed as 237, runs about 100. I get variable compression and all that, but even the most complex scenes with lots of movement didn't ever produce a file with a bitrate over 170. Olympus suggested that the highest data rate was achievable only on a UHS-2 card, but that did not provide better results in my experience. Then, I'm also perplexed by picture mode, the tip says it's to be used for footage to be edited, but Olympus clarified that it means footage that will be color graded. It's the flat profile. You'll see that it displays as a picture mode, eliminating your ability to choose others. And in full HD, there's an all intra setting that warns that the files will be very large and gives a data rate of 200 megabits. Actually, it's about 52. And in fact, they're the same size as super fine although admittedly they run 30 frames instead of 60. There are seven video presets, which provide shortcuts to the large scope of video settings. Of the seven, one governs clips, it has a duration, one sports 4K, one motion JPEG. The other four contain the standard settings and can be customized. Some resolution and quality settings enable alternate record rates, for 0.5 speed slow motion and up to 10 times fast motion. No audio in these modes. Once set, these are accessed from the overlay menu. In video mode, the only card option is to select one card. No auto switch to the second card or dual record. Now first, I have to love any camera that provides both mic input and headphone output. I know they're serious about video and audio. There are independent audio settings for internal and mic, an on-screen audio meter display, as well as plug-in power. That's more than most. There's a single movie setting on the mode dial, so use the menu to select the movie exposure mode. Shutter, ISO, and aperture can all be adjusted while recording. And there's a touch-enabled on-screen control panel to make silent adjustments to audio as well as the exposure adjustments. Auto ISO is not available in manual movie mode, and as is usual, focus modes are limited during video recording. Peaking appears on screen in manual focus modes. For low light performance by the light of two candles, I'm using ISO 6400 with the 12 millimeter lens open to f2.0 and a shutter speed of 1 30th. I tried to overheat the EM-1 Mark II, but after recording for over 90 minutes at Cinema 4K, I'm pretty confident you won't see the overheating icon. With a shutter speed of 1 60th, the EM-1 Mark II seems nearly free of rolling shutter jello effect at Cinema 4K 24 frame, UHD 4K 30 frame, and 1080 HD 60 frame. The Movie Menu HDMI Output selects Monitor or Recording, which is Clean Mode. 
turning rec bit on starts the external recorder when the camera's record button is pressed, and time code is supported, can be output as free run, record run, or time of day. Set up D4 to switch HDMI output to 4K, which outputs at 30 frames. I couldn't test Cinema 4K, as it's not supported by my Shogun. When reviewing an image, press OK to access the menu. There's an extensive raw export mode with lots of features, including adjustments to shadow, mid-tone, and highlights, as well as keystone adjustments. Press OK to preview, and then Yes to save the new image as a JPEG. Even JPEG images can be adjusted. But what's most fun is to select Art Bracket, which saves the image using all of the currently selected art filters as JPEGs, so you can review and select which you like. And one more thing, the ability to record audio notes. The charming half-timbered houses of Strasbourg. They're saved on the SD card as WAV files with the same file number as the image, and then they play when you review the image. The charming half-timbered houses of Strasbourg. Download the free Olympus Image Share app which supports remote shooting and geotagging using your device's GPS location, and import images from the camera. It's easy to connect using the app's easy setup feature and the QR code displayed on the camera. You'll only need to do that once. Couple of caveats if you're saving JPEGs on card 2. Switch cards first. There doesn't seem to be a way to retrieve images from card 2. And predictably, RAWs don't transfer. It's nicely integrated. You can post directly to Instagram or other social media once the file is transferred. And you can share with the Olympus community at the same time. The menu is full of interesting features. And here's a tricky one. Independent erase of RAW and JPEG files. Why can I only think of devious uses for this one? Overall, the menu is still kind of a jumble for me. It doesn't feel particularly well organized, but maybe I'm just being an Olympus newbie. And I frequently found myself in a situation where a feature either wasn't accessible or didn't work, like focus stacking or higher bitrate recording. Figuring out why wasn't always easy, and neither the menu nor the manual, which I would characterize as incomplete and abstruse, is useful for those kinds of situations. Not everything works as described, probably because some setting wasn't where it was supposed to be, even after a full reset. The menu doesn't list the exclusions or requirements for the features. Know what I like? The battery compartment door, large as it is, can still be opened when it's on the quick release plate. The EM1 Mark II's battery is large for a mirrorless camera, and it pays off in battery life. Battery does not charge or power from USB, a useful feature in a pinch, sadly, not this time. The bright green glow from the charger can illuminate a room. The EM1 Mark II's extensive set of image controls and customizations provide much more than the normal ability to tune images and create a working set of controls to suit your photography needs. And although it requires some study to understand the capabilities and then to map them to your working style, they, along with an impressive feature set, make the EM1 Mark II a most interesting and flexible camera for more than just those four headline features.